When South Africa shook off the shackles of apartheid, we had hope. When Nelson Mandela ushered in a progressive constitution which guaranteed a free press, we had hope. But in the past decade, his successors have failed to live up to those hopes. The media have pointed out these shortcomings and held the government to accounting. For, to, for that, the press is now under threat of a sweeping law that would effectively criminalize investigative reporting. Our next awardee, Farayal Hafaji, is doing all she can to stop that from happening. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. It is my great pleasure to present the 2014 International Press Freedom Award to Farayal Hafaji. Thank you so much, Clarence. Thank you, CPJ, Mr. and Mrs. Foley and colleagues. Lovely to be with you. So 20 years ago, our founding father, Nelson Mandela, set the bar extremely high for what media freedom and free expression would look like in our democratic South Africa. I won't attempt his lovely accent, but here's the standard he set. A critical, independent, and investigative press is the lifeblood of any democracy, he said. And so I'd argue we are. As a journalist who worked in decidedly unfree times and who reported the, ar the arrival of freedom with great pride, I have absolutely relished the protection of our constitution as a vital institution of our society. I'd argue that our robust media with its investigative bent and a very trenchant style, maybe a bit too trenchant at, at times, is a thing of pride. So Nelson Mandela continued, the press must be free from state interference. Well, here things get a tiny bit more complicated. The instinct of power, as we know, is often to shut down uncomfortable truths. The media in South Africa faces the very real threat of a secrecy law that will harm our critical and independent press. In addition, sadly, we continue to labor under old, old apartheid laws which have not been scrapped. So when I remind very powerful people of what else Madiba said, it's only a free press that has the capacity to relentlessly expose excesses and corruption they tend to swat it away. But Mandela's vision is being eroded. We are very often in court at great, great expense to keep open the promise of that freedom he gave us 20 years ago. I've come to learn that it really is a truism to say that the price of our freedom is eternal vigilance. The temptation to secrecy is very easy and transparency dims. It's important that South Africa maintains a global standard for the rest of our continent. So in neighboring Swaziland, Africa's last absolute monarchy, there is no media freedom. Right now, a human rights lawyer, Tulani Maseko, and our journalist colleague, Becky Makubu, are jailed. Their crime? Exposing how judges were playing fast and loose with the public purse. Last month, I had the great privilege to meet Becky's wife, Fikile, who cried after accepting a Media Freedom Award on her husband's behalf. She told me that life is very hard for her and her children without him. So I accept this great honor in Becky's name, and I pledge more, to do more to get him released, as well as our colleagues imprisoned in Ethiopia, whose plight makes me very sad. I firmly believe that a journalist's place is certainly not in jail. It is on the street, it is in the newsroom, it is raking the muck, it is making the editors angry, which they can do, holding power to account to make a better country and a better continent. Because as our Madiba said, it's only a free press that can be the vigilant watchdog of the public interest against the temptation of those who abuse power. Thank you very much for the warm recognition tonight. Thank you.